We go now to Mr. Duncan of South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Madam Secretary. Let me just tell you, Americans are frustrated. They're frustrated over the handling of Benghazi, what happened when four Americans died there. They're frustrated, um, and sometimes they're downright angry about being what they, they think, being misled about what really happened there, being told that this was a protest over a video, not just for a couple of days, but for weeks on end. And then they're frustrated when they see comments from you this morning when you said, what difference at this point does it make? I'll tell you what difference it makes. It makes a difference when Americans think they were misled about something for political reasons. In the hearing this morning, you mentioned that we were clear eyed about the threats and dangers as they were developing in eastern Libya. Madam Secretary, if you were really, in your words, clear eyed about the levels of threat uh, to our consulate in Benghazi or our special mission in Benghazi, um, then you should have known about Chris Stevens' memo, I believe, of 16 August that said our consulate could not be defended from a coordinated attack. Questions Americans have is, did he expect an attack? If you were clear-eyed, then why didn't your department, re why did your uh, department reject the request, I believe on 7 June, for 16 additional security agents, the site security team that would have been funded by DOD, not a DO state expenditure? If you were clear-eyed, shouldn't you have known that there was no real Libyan government to turn to for security assistance? You answered that question for Mr. Meeks earlier when you said there was uh, you were unsure about the, the Libyan government and their ability uh, to provide that assistance. Uh, if you were clear-eyed, were, were you uh, clear-eyed about the al-Qaeda's displeasure with who we seem to be supporting uh, during the summer elections, the moderate that was elected? If you were clear-eyed, shouldn't you have known that al-Qaeda roamed freely in and around Benghazi? As my friend from uh, Pennsylvania pointed out, there were al-Qaeda flags not just at the protests. There were al-Qaeda flags flying all over Benghazi. If you were clear-eyed, uh, were you clear-eyed when the Brits left Benghazi because they had the attack? Um, why did four Americans die? What was so important that Ambassador Stevens, if he knew there was a security threat in Benghazi, he went there on September 10th and 11th and gave his life for our country? What was so important for him to go to eastern Libya, knowing all these threats, knowing the memos are clear and I think you misspoke earlier when you said that uh, you didn't know of any requests that were denied for more security. June 7th, email exchange between Ambassador Stevens and John Moretti uh, when he requested for a, a one MSD team or actually an additional MSD team. And the reply from John Moretti said, unfortunately, MSD cannot support the request. There was a request made for more security, and it was denied on June 7th. And so... Madam Secretary, you let the consulate become a death trap, and that's national security malpractice. You've said you take responsibility. What does responsibility mean, Madam Secretary? You're still in your job, and there are four people at the Department of State that have culpability in this that are still in their jobs. I heard the answer about um, firing or removing personnel. I get that. But this was gross negligence. At what point in time can our administration and can our government fire someone whose gross negligence left, left four Americans dead in Benghazi? What does the word responsibility mean to you, Madam Secretary? I think I've made that very clear, Congressman. And let me um, say that we've come here uh, and made a very open, uh, transparent uh, presentation uh, I did not have to declassify the ARB. I could have joined uh, 18 of the other ARBs under both Democratic and Republican administrations, kept it classified, and then, you know, just said goodbye. That's not who I am. That's not what I do. And I have great confidence that the Accountability Review Board uh, did the job they were asked to do, made the recommendations that they thought were based on evidence, not on emotion, there was a lot of evidence, well, reclaiming my time, there was a lot of evidence well, that led I'm, up to the security situation. I'm sorry, Congressman. You mentioned transparency. Um, you haven't provided the call logs of messages, instant messages, during the attack between the Post and the Operations Center. Uh, in, a, in an era of transparency, will you release these communications between Benghazi, Tripoli, and Washington? 
I will get an answer to you on that, but I will tell you once more, the reason we have accountability review boards is so that we take out of politics, we take out of emotion what happened, and we try to get to the truth. I think this very distinguished panel did just that, and we are working diligently over time to implement their recommendations. That is my responsibility. I'm going to do everything I can uh, before I finish my tenure. And I would also, going back to your first point and about the concerns that um, people uh, you represented have expressed about uh, statements that were made, I would refer you both to the unclassified version of the ARB where after months of research and talking to more than 100 witnesses, the picture is still very complicated about what happened that night. There are key questions, I'm quoting, surrounding the identity, actions, and motivations of the perpetrators that remain to be determined. And I recommend that every member read the classified version, which goes into greater detail that I cannot uh, speak to here today. It was a terrorist attack.